Hello, today we'd like to show you the Silence Protect app for Splunk. You begin by downloading our free application from the App Manager within Splunk or directly from Splunk Base. When visiting our download page on Splunk Base, you will find an overview of the application, which includes a description, versioning information, and a link to our related technology add on. Clicking on the Details tab provides high level installation instructions as well as a link to our detailed installation and configuration guide. This detailed guide includes important topics, which include requirements, installation, configuration of multiple data sources, uninstallation if that proves necessary at any point, as well as troubleshooting steps and contact information if you need more support. Here's an example of content showing the configuration of real-time syslog alerts. After the Silence Splunk app is downloaded and configured to receive data, you will notice that the application has been designed for both managers and responding analysts. Managers can review the heads-up dashboards that provide statistical visibility across the entire environment. Analysts and responders can use those same dashboards to pivot into the details required to complete their investigation. The Syslog Overview dashboard, for example, is a heads-up awareness dashboard that provides information regarding each prevention component within the PROTECT agent, such as mathematical model convictions, memory exploit protection, script control, application control, device control, and even an indicator of any humans overriding mathematical convictions. You will also notice that every dashboard contains useful filters to help with investigations. These include a time range selector, a tenant selector, which is quite useful for multi-tenant organizations such as MSSPs, and a wildcard filter, which can be used to search over any data field. To illustrate these filters, we will create a wildcard filter for Mimi and select all time. We can see that we have 43 events over five devices. Scrolling down will provide details on the devices and the file names. All data within the app is hyperlink clickable. Thus, clicking on the 43 will show us the threat event details. Within this data, you will notice that all of the key fields are necessary for a responding analyst to complete their investigation, including host information, file path, file name, and hash, which can be used for identification and further research. Each prevention mechanism within the PROTECT agent has their own heads-up awareness dashboard, providing a statistical breakdown of the most critical fields. The example shown is for mathematically convicted threats. However, we also provide a heads-up dashboard for memory exploits, script control, app control, and device control. In addition to threat awareness, we also provide detailed device information, which includes the number of hosts that are online versus offline, when they last communicated, the number of files analyzed, breakdowns for versions, policy, zones, and even operating systems. Device details are shown at the bottom of the dashboard. We also provide the ability to visually see and correlate attacker behavior using the indicator correlation dashboards. Taking our previous example, for instances of Mimi cats within the environment, we will select file name from the dropdown and search for Mimi over all time. This visually illustrates which file was found on each system. We can also change the left filter from device name to SHA-256 to see if any of the files have changed hashes during the attack. Additionally, changing the left filter to file path shows where the files were discovered, which can help identify attacker TTPs and also lead us to other tools or information that could be found in those directories. Silence is part of Splunk's adaptive response framework, which allows users to take action across the enterprise without ever leaving Splunk.
Currently, we provide users the ability to retrieve information from the global white and black lists, as well as modify both lists by using the add and delete functions. For example, if a user would like to add a known bad hash to the global blacklist, they can do so by selecting that function and selecting a hash and pasting it in as a parameter. If they need to reverse that decision for any reason, they can simply select the delete from global blacklist function and click submit again. As you'll see, the HTTP status 200 code shows that it's successful, but there's even useful error messages that exist for instances where a user tries to add or delete hashes that already exist. We hope that you enjoyed the video tour of the Silence Protect app for Splunk, and we wish you happy Splunking.